in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ spirit of the living God we're gathered here tonight for alignment there is that which have been spoken concerning today there is that which have been spoken concerning this season so we align ourselves to the work that you're doing on the earth today we align ourselves to your plan to that which is written in heaven Holy Spirit, we submit ourselves to that perfect alignment in you. Thank you. Thank you. Tonight, Lord, we open our hearts to receive your truth. We open our hearts to receive the ministry of the Holy Ghost in us. You will do your work in our hearts and it will manifest in our living. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. I declare burdens are being lifted, yokes are being destroyed in the mighty name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Thank you, Holy Spirit. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. You may take your seats. Praise God. How was your week? Or how has your week been? wonderful praise God I'm going to be sharing with us um, something I titled we are a people of prophecy we are a people of prophecy now this is one thing God's children do not realize how much they should bring it into their consciousness that we are not here by ourselves. We are not here to do what we like. We are here because God brought us in. Praise God. In Genesis chapter 1 and verse 26, he says, Let us make man in our image and after our likeness. Now you know, People have, have often asked that question. So who was God talking to? He said, well, let us make man. <laughs> Praise God. Who was God talking to? See, John lets us know that there are three that bear record in heaven. That's what he said in John chapter five, 1 John chapter 5 and verse 7. He said, there are three that bear record in heaven. And he clearly told us who they are. He says they are what? The Father. What's the next one? The Word. And the next one? The Holy Spirit. There are three that do what? Bear record so they hold this record three in heaven bearing a record and it says the three of them are the father so there is the father and then he says the word notice it didn't say the son he says the word it was not a mistake so there is the word and then he says the Holy Spirit. So he tells us these are the three that bear record in heaven. Now this lets you know that the Father is a person. The Word is a person. The Holy Spirit is a person. Are you following me? And he says these three never disagree. Because that's what he says. And these three are one. You see some translations to say the three agree in one. Now that's to tell you that God doesn't do things alone. Whatever God takes counsel for, whatever God does, these are the three that do it. Everything God does. 
Praise God. And now, let me show you something. Go to the next verse. Go to the next verse in this scripture. This is not what I'm um, preaching. Now watch this. And there are three that bear witness on earth. And then he now says the spirit, the water, and the blood. One day, I pray the Holy Spirit will give us utterance to teach these things. There are, there are things I know that I've not even taught yet. <laughs> Praise God. Because there are levels and levels that we need to go before we now start entering some of these things. But when he says there are three that bear witness, notice there are three that bear record in heaven. But when it comes to the earth, he didn't say there are three that bear with record on the earth. He said there are three that bear witness on earth. So there is a record in heaven, there is a witness on the earth. So there are no two records, it's one record. But that record has to be given a witness on the earth. And notice, he says, on the earth, it's the spirit, the water, and the blood. That's another day's talk. If I enter this now, <laughs> it would completely deviate from what the Lord has put in my heart. Praise God. Now, why did we come here? The question, when God says, let us make man in our image and after our likeness, who was he talking to? Of course, now you know who he was talking to. Praise God. Who was he talking to? Huh? Talk to me. Who was he talking to? Huh? Then I asked you the question. So who was doing the talking? <laughs> huh? Who was doing the talking? <laughs> so he says, let us make man. So one person did the talking, right? And he said he was talking to. So who did the talking and who, who, who was he talking to? So who was talking? <laughs> Praise God. I'll tell you who was talking. The father was doing the talking. Now remember, I've taught you this before. In Genesis chapter 1, everything you read in Genesis chapter 1 was the father speaking. Are you following me? That was the father speaking. Everything you see in Genesis chapter 1. Now that's why he is referred to as God. In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth, right? And when you look at the whole of chapter 1, you just see he always said, and God 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 said. Right? Now, all he did was to speak. He didn't move one pin. You've heard me say that a lot of times. He didn't move one pin until he finished his work. So it was in chapter 1 in verse 26 that he made that statement. He says, let us make man in our image and after our likeness and let him have dominion. Now, let's stick with 26. He says, let us make man. It was the father that was speaking there because he was still doing his work of creation. Are you getting what I'm saying? Let us make man. And when he finished speaking, he didn't bend down. He didn't come down. Nobody have seen the Father. Nobody will ever see the Father. <laughs> Praise God. I think I showed that to you. Was it last week? Was it last week I, I explained that to you? You know, when he said, no man has ever seen God. You know, I said, what? when he says no man has ever seen God, he was talking about the Father. Nobody have seen the Father. And nobody can see the Father. Because the Father is not seeable. Yet he exists. Are you getting what I'm saying? The spirit is not seeable, yet he exists. Praise God. Now, the word is the other one. It is the word that manifests that men can see. Are you following me? Are you following me? That's why John told us in John chapter 1, says, and the word was made flesh. Now that's not the first time. Jesus was not the first time that the word of God was made flesh. Jesus is not the first time. And if you study the Old Testament, there are several times the word was made flesh. Every appearance you see 
of mm -hmm. God in the Old Testament, like he appeared as a man. And you understand what I'm saying? He, he never appeared as a dog. He never appeared <laughs> as anything. He appeared as a man. And you understand what I'm saying? All the appearance of God. You know, so they say, ah, that tree, the way that tree is moving, is like that is God. You know, there, there, are, there are people who worship cow. And they say, cow carries God. As in, the cow represents their God. I mean, real people in this world, they worship cow. You know, somewhere in Asia, <laughs> it's God. They, they worship cow. Praise <laughs> God. Now, but every appearance of God that you find, he appeared as a man. Now that gives credence to that statement, let us make man in our image and after our likeness. Are you following me? Are you following me? So every appearance you see is the word that manifests, that manifests as a man. Are you getting what I'm saying? So we find that in Melchizedek. Are you getting? We find that in when those three men went to see Abraham in Genesis chapter 18. We find that in, um, where else now? Several times. I'll show you that, that God appeared to Abraham several times. You know, every appearance you see of God is the word made flesh. But in all those appearances, he will just appear, give them the word, and he disappears. But the first time that the word dwelt among us, was Jesus. What does it mean dwelt among us? Now that's why he was born as a child. He grew up, became a man, stayed 33 years on earth. That is dwelling. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? That is dwelling. But you see, when he finished his work, he left. And the moment he left, he became who he was. What is that? The word of God. That's why you've heard me say this, that if you go to heaven, you will not see one that they say, this is Jesus. But you see, if even in heaven, if he needs to appear to you, he will. But here is why I say, you can't point and say, that is Jesus. Because the next time you see him, you will need to identify him again. <laughs> you get what I'm saying? So you can't say, See, this man is Jesus. Anytime he comes, you know, okay, ah, that, that's Jesus. Ah, I like his shirt. I like his name. Ah, eh. <laughs> no, because that's who he is. He's the word of God. But then he is the one that can be seen. He's the one that makes appearance. The other two, they show up. They are there, but you never see them. Now, that's how the Godhead is designed. <laughs> that's how it is. Are you following what I'm saying? Is it, are you catching it? Or am I confusing you? All right, so from the beginning when God says, let us make man in our image and after our likeness, that was the release of prophecy. Are you hearing what I'm saying? That's the release of prophecy. This is who man is going to be in the image and likeness of God. Now, I've told you before that God, when God formed Adam from the dust of the ground and breathed into him the breath of life, the Bible says Adam became a living soul. But God is a spirit, right? God is a spirit. Okay, so the, the one who carries the covering of God is the Holy Spirit. So he's the one that we used to identify God. So that's why I was saying God is a spirit. Right? Now, he's appeared in the flesh, but he doesn't dwell in flesh. So we can't say God is flesh. Right? So he now says, let us make man in our image and after our likeness. And God made man in his image and his likeness. And why? He gave man an assignment. He said, let him have dominion over this and this and this and that. All those statements are declarations of prophecy. Are you hearing what I'm saying? They are all declarations of prophecy. And if God has said something, 
Number one, understand that he meant what he said, and he's serious about what he said. He didn't say to see if it will work. He said it because that is the counsel of heaven. That is the record that they bear. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Are you hearing what I'm saying? That's the record that they bear. What is the record? Now, the record is in what God said in Genesis chapter 1 and verse 26. Let us make man in our image and after our likeness. And that thing was not fulfilled until Jesus came. Until Jesus came, there was no man that was in the image and likeness of God. None. I hear what I'm saying. That's why even that word was a prophecy. Are you getting what I'm saying? Now, when you go to 1 John chapter, the same where we were, 1 John chapter 5, verse 11. 1 John chapter 5, verse 11. Let me show you that. 1 John 5, 11. It says, and this is, give me old King James. Now, now, the verse 8 read, now watch this. It says, and this is the what? This is the what? Record. What's the record? That God had, notice, past tense. The record is that God had given to us what? What? Eternal life. And this life is in his son. Now, when he says there are three that bear record in heaven, the Father, the Word, and the Holy Spirit. I told you there is a record that they are bearing, right? And now he comes in and says, this is the record that they are bearing. And what's the record? That God had given to us. Notice, to us, what? Eternal life. So when God says, let us make man in our image and after our likeness. That was when he set forth this record. And you understand what I'm saying? That's when he set forth this record. And the record is true. What is the record? That man will carry eternal life. And eternal life is not a life that is given to you to go and live. That's why he says, and this life is where? In his son. So he hid this life in his son. Are you hearing what I'm saying? He hid this life in his son. Now the desire is that man will have eternal life. That was the word that God spoke from the very beginning when he made man. He set forth that prophecy. And now Adam was created and he's living his life trying to please God. You know the story, the sin against God, God drove them out of the garden and all, everything began to be messed up and things just got haywire. And at some point, God showed up, okay, you know what, I'm going to walk with you. He picked Abraham and walked Abraham, set a pattern with Abraham, got a family through Abraham, you know, because God says, I don't want to destroy everything again, you know. So, this is what I'm going to do. In the midst of the darkness, just like he did in Genesis chapter 1, he says there was darkness everywhere. And God said, let there be light. And God, first, Second Corinthians told us, God who commanded light to shine out of darkness. Praise God. So God made up his mind. Okay, in the midst of this chaos on the earth, I'll still raise a family. I will do what I have to do. So God selected a family in Abraham, set up a whole nation, and said, okay, let me start with this nation. And then he took them out of Egypt, took them up to the mountain, and then he gave them laws. See, he gave them laws. Now, he knew he was still dealing with men of the flesh. Are you hearing what I'm saying? He knew he was dealing with men of the flesh. But you see, the same thing he was trying to do with Adam was what he tried to do with the children of Israel. After he formed man of the dust of the ground, breathed into him the breath of life, Adam became a living soul. God began to coach Adam and Eve, right? He began to coach them until they went, went astray. In that coaching, he was to bring them up to understand the patterns and the ways of God. Then, God would have given this record that he spoke about. 
Are you hear what I'm saying? So he put that tree of life in the garden and the tree of knowledge of good and evil in that garden. And I've told you before, when he said you will not eat of this tree, he didn't really say you will not eat of this tree. He said you will not freely eat of this tree. Now, just translation issue. Or, yeah, translation issue. He, he didn't say you will never eat of the tree. If he says you will never eat of the tree, then why did he put it there? And it was a tree that was good for food. And God is not a purpose, purposeless God. <laughs> you understand? So, the key word there was freely. The plan was when he has coached them and they have followed him and obeyed him, then he will release them to eat of that tree. Now, the eating of that tree will be at a season where he has decided that at this time, man is ready to receive something. And then there was the other tree, which is called the tree of life. Praise God. And funny enough, that tree of life too was a normal tree. Are you hearing what I'm saying? It was a normal tree. Now, John lets us know that the life is not in the tree. The life is in his son. Are you catching what I'm saying? Now, this is, this is how God does his things. If you don't understand God, you will follow the wrong thing. So God said, that tree is called the tree of life. Say, ah, if it's called the tree of life, that means if you eat the tree, you will have life. And you will go and eat the tree, you will not see the life. You'll be wondering what's... Ah. Like I said, I've told you this before. When they ate that tree of knowledge of good and evil, they didn't know any good and evil. They didn't know nothing. <laughs> Praise God. Why? Because it was not there. It was not there. The tree, can I tell you something? The tree of the knowledge of good and evil. It's the season, I want you to listen to me. The tree of the knowledge of good and evil is the season that the... Okay, okay, hold on. Let me take it step by step. Praise God. So you follow gradually. Let me take it step by step. Okay, so God brought the children of Israel out of Egypt, right? And he took them up the mountain. And then he gave them laws that they will obey, right? And you know the struggle in trying to obey those laws. But then God in his word, turn with me to Jeremiah chapter 31. Jeremiah chapter 31. Where is my 31 now? Jeremiah chapter 31. After God had given them the commandments, and you know they were struggling to keep it, oh, you know, and God began to speak by prophecy again in Jeremiah. Remember what we're talking about? We are a people of what? Prophecy. Now, in Jeremiah chapter 31 and verse 33. Uh, let's start from verse 31. Verse 31. 31. Jeremiah 31, 31. Behold, the days are coming, says the Lord, when I will make a new covenant with the house of Israel and with the house of Judah. Go on. Not according to the covenant that I made with their fathers in the day that I took them by the hand to lead them out of the land of Egypt. So there was a covenant that was made when he took them out of the land of Egypt. When he gave them those laws, the covenant was, if you will keep these laws, then I will be a God to you. There was a covenant there. Are you hearing me? So, but it says, the one I'm going to make with them is different from that one I made with them when they came out of Egypt. My covenant which they broke, though I was a husband to them, says the Lord. Next verse. But this is the covenant that I will make with the house of Israel after those days, says the Lord. And what's the covenant? I will put my laws in their what? In their what? Minds. I will put my law in their minds and write it on, the, on their hearts and I will be their God and they shall be my people. Take note of this. Take note of this. He says, I'm going to make a new covenant with these people and this new covenant is not going to be 
a slate and writings that I, will, that I will give to them like I did when I brought them out of Egypt. This new covenant, I am going to write my laws where in their minds, I will put it in their minds and I will write it in their hearts. Remember, he's going somewhere. Let us make man in our image and after our likeness. He's on that journey. So he's tried the physical one. It didn't work. But then he didn't deviate from his plan. Now he's going to the main one, which is now, they won't go look at it. This time around, I'm going to put it by myself inside there. Now do you know the tree of the knowledge of, of good and evil was this very point? Are you hearing what I'm saying? Now God was training them and bringing them up to the place where God will now put his law in their hearts. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Adam and Eve, that's what God was planning. Now he was training them to see how they will obey him. Training them to see how they will obey him. Now when they have done their physical obedience, then the day will come when he will now put this that he's saying here to Jeremiah. So that tree of the knowledge of, of good and evil, the day God would have permitted them to eat of that tree was the day God was going to circumcise their hearts and put his word, his law, in their heart. That's why it's called the tree of knowledge of good and evil. So judgment will now be in their hearts. Are you understand what I'm saying? So you see why it's not a tree that you eat. It's, there's no nutrient in that tree that you eat. And ah, I know what is good and and bad. No, it's a spiritual thing. It's, it's, it's an administering, oh, how do you put it now? It's, it's a, a release that God was going to do to them. So that never happened to Adam and Eve. Are you following what I'm saying? That never happened to Adam and Eve. But you find God promising this word later on through his servant Jeremiah. And not only Jeremiah. Now we go to Ezekiel. Go to Ezekiel chapter 36. I think Ezekiel 36. Oh, thank you, Lord Jesus. Verse 20. Verse 20, let's start from verse. Let me look for a good place to start. Verse 24. Let's start from verse 24. Ezekiel 36, 24. For I will, now God was speaking in prophecy. For I will take you from among the nations, gather you out of all countries, and bring you into your own land. Go on. Then I will sprinkle clean water on you, and you shall be what? Clean. I will cleanse you from all your filthiness and from all your idols. Next verse. I will give you a new heart and put a new spirit within you. Now, that's the same, that's the same thing, actually. I will take the heart of stone out of your flesh and give you a heart of flesh. Go on. Watch this now. I will what? Put my spirit within you and cause you to walk in my status and you will keep my judgment and do them. Now, Jeremiah says, I will put my laws, I will write my laws in your mind and put it in your heart. Now, Ezekiel goes in further to explain the practicality of it. And Ezekiel says, I will what? I will put my spirit within you and cause you to walk in my status and you will keep my judgment. It's the same thing they were saying. So how is God going to put his laws in our hearts? How? When he puts the Holy Spirit within us. Are you understanding that? Are you understanding? So it's not like God is saying, come, come, come. Now right on your heart. Ooh, no, it's the giving of the Holy Spirit, that is what brings us into 
the knowledge of good and evil. Are you understand what I'm saying? That's what brings us into the knowledge of good and evil. So, hear me. Ah, I pray, I pray you catch this now. When Jesus, when the word of God became flesh and dwelt among us, Jesus selected a few men and he was walking with them, training them, and for three and a half years, they were together. And when they were done, he said to them, he says, look, tarry in Jerusalem until something happens to you. I'm going away, but I'm coming back. I will not leave you comfortless. I will come to you. And then he says, go and tarry, stay in Jerusalem until something happens to you. Now, guess what? When they dwelt in Jerusalem, on the day of Pentecost, something happens to them. What happened to them? The Spirit of God came upon them, right? And the Bible said, and they were all filled with the Holy Spirit. Do you know the same thing God was doing in the Garden of Eden, trying to achieve with Adam and Eve? Jesus now achieved it with his disciples. And you understand what I'm saying? So if Adam and Eve had obeyed God, what they would have received in the eating of the tree of knowledge of good and evil was the Holy Ghost. Because it was when they received the Holy Ghost, they now knew what to do. That's why Jesus said, don't do anything until you receive the Holy Ghost. It's not because of the power. It's because of the, the ability to know good from evil. It's not a human thing. It's not a brain walk. Because sometimes what is good for normal men is not good for God. Are you understanding what I'm saying? So it takes the Holy Spirit to look at a matter and tell what is right from what is wrong. God knows that. So he didn't give that to man to understand by himself. It will take the Holy Spirit to make a man to know what is good and what is evil. You might see a good business. It looks wonderful. Everybody said this thing is selling. Are you get what I'm saying? And you want to jump on it. But it will take the Holy Spirit to let you know that no, don't do that. Rather, do this. Are you understand what I'm saying? So that was what Jesus was doing. The same plan from the Garden of Eden was what you now see Jesus do in the life of his disciples. And today, here's it. The truth is, when we get born again, what happens to us? Our hearts, this thing Ezekiel said, this thing Jeremiah said, when we get born, a man gets born again, he receives the Holy Spirit inside of him. And what happens when you receive the Holy Spirit inside of you? You come to the place of knowledge of good and evil. You know what is right. Because God said it. He said, when I do that, and, and give me, good, let's go back to Jeremiah. Let's go back to Jeremiah 31. Are you following? Are you sure? Jeremiah 31. Give me from verse, we're in verse 34, 33. Quickly, quickly. Now, okay, let's read from 33. But this is the covenant that I will make with the house of Israel after those days, says the Lord, I will put my law in their minds and write it on, the, on their hearts. And I will be their God and they shall be my people. Now go to 34. No more, hear this, no more shall every man teach his neighbor and every man his brother saying, know the Lord. For they, shall, they, sh they all shall know me from the least of them to the greatest of them, says the Lord. For I will forgive their iniquities and their sins I will remember no more. Are you understanding what God is saying? So nobody is going to tell you, you know, Jesus was with them. He was always telling them what to do. <laughs> now because the truth is they didn't know the difference between good and evil. They didn't know. The same thing, Adam and Eve, they were just, oh, don't eat of this tree, you know, you can eat of this one. They didn't know, so they were just following. Oh, the, but then the plan is not that every time you'll be led by someone. Are you following me? The plan was God has arranged, he has planned a way that you will be led by him directly. So Jesus said, don't do anything until the Holy Ghost comes. So the moment you receive the Holy Ghost, his assignment in you. Now I know we've talked about many aspects of the Holy Spirit. Oh, he, he, he's the one that lets you know you're a child of God. He's the one that makes you speak in tongues. You, know, you understand what I'm saying? But hey, hey, this 
aspects is where we have not paid attention to, and that is judgment. He is the one. He is the tree of knowledge of good and evil. Are you following me? So when you receive the Holy Ghost, the benefit of that is you begin to discern what is right from what is wrong. And every child of God is supposed to dwell. Now, all this is because there is words that God has spoken that you are supposed to fulfill. And to fulfill that word, you can't do it as a man. You can't do it by yourself. It will take first the knowledge of good and evil to know it. Can I tell you something? There is another tree in that same garden. And that tree is called the tree of life. And so if the Holy Ghost is the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, then what is the tree of life? <laughs> Praise God. I don't think I should enter that today. We don't have time for today. Maybe next week we would enter into the tree of life. <laughs> Praise God. Are you, are you following what I'm saying? Are you following what I'm saying? Now, we are on a journey. And this journey is to bring us to a place. And you see that place we are being brought to is the place where we are in the image of God and in his likeness. Everything we do in this life is geared towards becoming what? The image and likeness of God. And in being the image and likeness of God, there are certain things that we ought to do. And that's what have dominion over every creation that God have created. And brothers and sisters, just like John said in 1 John, he says he has put all things under our feet, right? But he says we, we, yet we don't see all things put under him right, right now, right? But we see who? Jesus. We don't see all things put under him right now. But we see one. He's called Jesus. Now when he says he's, he will see Jesus, he's not saying we will never get to that point where all things will be put under him. No, we see how Jesus lived this life. We see how Jesus functioned. And hey, let me ask you that question. Do you think all things were put under the feet of Jesus? Huh? Do you think all things were put under the feet of Jesus? Now, he says, we see Jesus. That means, hey, this is the hope that we have. Because the mirror that we are becoming is Jesus. That's the reason the word became flesh and dwelt with us. To show us who we are. So you see Jesus traveling by sea and there was a storm. He wakes up and says, I was going to peace be still. What was he doing? Let them have dominion. He, he wanted food and he saw a fig tree. And he said, ah, this tree is supposed to give me food. He got there. There was no fruit. Ah, how come? In his vexation, he said, no man will eat of you. The ground head and dried up. The tree dried up. What's that? Let them have dominion. He needed money. He says, hey, go to the sea. The first fish you can, you will see money in the mouth. Fishes don't carry money, but the man of dominion is speaking. When he says, you will, the first fish you catch, the fish heard him. The fish went to look for money. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? The fish went to look for money because, now here's where we're going. I'm trying to keep to time. <laughs> Praise God. Here's where we're going. God is moving us to the place where we begin to function in that same dominion. And the Spirit of God began to lay this in my heart to teach because of this. There are too many distractions all around. And lately, I began to find out that the main distractions are even from God's people, God's anointed people. We hear many sermons, but few teaching of the word of God. The Holy Spirit spoke to me a few days ago. He says, son, I want you to take time and watch. Watch, watch. And all I hear 
is noise. 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 The Holy Spirit showed me several things. says, that's not my word. So we find preachers giving advices. We find preachers doing more of motivational talks. But few are teaching God's people the word. Listen. In the world, there are many activities. Right? But every one of us that belong to God, our life is geared towards one thing. Fulfilling the things that have been written concerning us. And when we say the thing that have been written concerning us, it's not to start looking at what is written concerning me. Will I be president of Nigeria? Will I be a rich businessman? Will I? That's not what I'm talking about. All those things are simply expressions. The main focus is becoming the image and likeness of God. So when you now begin to push God's children into different activities, and then you realize that these activities are pulling them from being the image and likeness of God, there is a problem. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Yes, sir. So a pastor can start out teaching his congregation, teaching, then suddenly he realizes, ah, my, my people are not employed. A lot of them are out of job, so they are all begging money. Every time after service, they will line up, and pastor will now be sorting out everybody, and, you know, sorting out, this will say school fees, pastor will say, this will say ah, and the pastor will now sit and say, what do I do, what do I do, what do I do? Maybe he will now read a book somewhere. Ah, this is what we are missing. We need to start teaching our people how to do business, how to do business, and then they start teaching their people how to do business, and soon enough, your people enter, start doing business, enter in the world, and start competing with with all those people and before you know what's happening they've lost the focus they come to church they now convert it to let's use the business money and be giving to church so what do we start doing in church we'll begin to build edifice we'll begin to build branches we'll begin to do you understand what i'm saying and then we'll say oh the kingdom of god is advancing oh no the kingdom of god is not advancing because the people are not advancing they are not fulfilling the prophecy is it wrong for God's children to do business? No, not at all. Not at all. Here is the problem. We don't wait for the timing of the Spirit. Are you understanding what I'm saying? We don't wait for the timing of the Spirit. If you go before the Spirit, no matter how much you need money, I've taught you this before. The first thing you need to understand with God is what Jesus said. Take no thought for your life. That, that is a principle that every child, if you don't get to that point where you know how to be sustained by God, I'm telling you the truth, any business or job you get will take you away from God. It will. Because it doesn't take time for you to get adapted to that system. And the moment you get adapted to that system, it begins to give you direction. It just takes them putting you in a management team. Let's, let's, let's assume, let's assume attending meetings is the kingdom of God, right? I said, let's assume attending meetings, right, is the kingdom of God. So you just grow and you become... A manager, and once you're a manager, oh, there's this meeting, and uh, ah, the only time we can fix it is on Sunday. And it's a very strategic meeting. Ah, ah, ah. Ah, okay, well, I go to church every Sunday now. I'll explain to Pastor. Pastor, because this meeting, it's, if I miss this meeting, it will affect. Uh, do you understand what I'm saying? What is driving it? I don't want to lose my position. And you understand what I'm saying? I don't want to lose my position. And, and God's children are getting distracted by the day. They are getting distracted by the day. They are getting distracted by the day. Listen, when God chose his disciples, he didn't choose, see, in his day, they were established men. And you understand what I'm saying? In his day, they were business people. In his day, they were intel, they were professors. They were, they were scholars. They were even now Jesus. Imagine Jesus came. He could simply have gone into the school of Gamaliel. 
and picked the brilliant ones. I don't know if you understand what I'm saying. These are people who have been schooled in the way of doctrine. He would have picked from there and started his work. But he did it. He could have gone to the palaces and picked the brightest people. But he did it. He went to the streets. He saw a failed fisherman. And he says, you follow me. He was picking normal people who were just living their lives, trying to patch up tax collectors who were hiding to steal money. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Those are the people Jesus picked. Why? Because, you see these people, there was a prophecy spoken concerning them. That I will put my laws in their hearts and write it, and put my laws in their mind and write it in their hearts. And these same people will receive the Holy Ghost. And when they receive the Holy Ghost, nobody will tell them this is right or this is wrong. They will know exactly what to do. And the moment that happened, these same men that were nobodies became champions. Stand up on your feet. I'll stop here. Listen to me. There is something that hit my spirit today while I was preparing for this message. Everybody that God created must fulfill this prophecy. Everyone. God promised it. He didn't leave it in our hands. It was a prophecy that was spoken that I will put my laws in their hearts and write it in, I'll put my laws in their mind and write it in their hearts. There are people you have met, there are people you know who seem to be stubborn. And you understand what I'm saying? Who seem not to reason the proper way you expect them to reason. They may be relatives. You're wondering, how come, how come? Sometimes you even try to preach to them but it's falling on deaf ears. But God didn't say, you will do it. He said, I will do it. It's time to change gear. Stop worrying about them. Start asking the Lord to fulfill his word that he spoke concerning them. Lord, you are the one who said it. You will put, write your laws in their minds. You will put it in their hearts. I've been trying to minister to this person. I've, been, I've done it. I've shined lights. I have preached. Now, Lord, fulfill your prophecy. Because this one too, this one too, will fulfill that prophecy. I you hear what I'm saying? We find spouses who, maybe the husband is born again, but the wife is just dragging and the husband is complaining, complaining. Maybe it's the wife born again, husband is not, wife is complaining. No more complaints. Father, cause your word to be fulfilled in this person. Cause your word to be fulfilled. And then you will now want to ask the question, truly, is there any heart that God does not have the ability to reach? No. So can you lift up your voice in the next two minutes? If there is anyone that comes to mind, if there is any particular person that comes to mind, you're going to pray that prayer. Say, Father, now you talk up. You're the one who said it. You're the one who said it. It is time for this person to receive of that tree also. It is time for you to you said you would do this thing by yourself and that's how you will become their God that's how they will become that's how they will become they don't become by their own minds they don't become because they, they thought about it and understood it they become by the giving of the spirit of God let that washing take place in them 
He says, I will sprinkle water on you. Shegabarata kata tata tele brahada bayande. Makadi zebre tele kuna hazaga yambo do producia. Ega de me man pantananga de le braca de lo crodo bossi la brede. Reke danga dumbre na quada zakata la bando. E grete te na kumba banda file prede fena mo. Rocco potota tati la berata ba. Reke te 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 le ke paruna. E gana ba 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 broto. Reke ta kane bene. Ni pradi kapayon de broco bado. E grete ne kapan de brata de ho. O poni si le katela reke tapata tatolo ho roko potolo potali kataya e grene de 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 e rapu ne pa ne pa ne kodi he ni gede balisa la kore e bene kore mahalo reka poni fradu e le na de celebranta ne gede ne kabadele breke de bene ho ho a vonia 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 de dera reke bara bara da 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 dina. In the name of the Lord Jesus, listen, we that have received the Spirit of God, He has placed us. But then we come in contact with different people. We come in contact with business partners. We come in contact with um, co-workers, friends. And we meet all kinds of people. This is an assignment the Lord is placing. How many people will you come in contact with? And because they came in contact with you, they say, ah, Father, this one too. This one too. This one. You must eat what I have eaten. You must eat of that tree that I have eaten too. Are you hearing what I'm saying? No struggling to preach. That's all I'm talking about. You start on your knees. You have a business meeting with somebody. You say, Father, how can we talk this business if, if he doesn't know good from evil? But because life has orchestrated it that I will be having a business meeting with this person, Lord, I ask, can you fulfill your word in his life? Can you fulfill your word in his life? Are you listening to me? Are you listening to me? That should be the attitude that we carry. Remember, he says he will have all men to be saved and come to the knowledge of the truth. How many men? How many men? He said he will have all men be saved. There is a prophecy that must be fulfilled. If not, he is recording failure. There is a prophecy that must be fulfilled. As you come in contact with men, ask that question. When will this one, when will the prophecy be fulfilled in this one? You pray. You call their names. Father, I'm meeting Susan so person tomorrow. Ah, his hour of salvation have come. So that we can speak truth. So that we can speak truth. Say he will have all men to be saved. Come. To the knowledge of the truth. How do you come to the knowledge of the truth when you don't even know what a lie is? It's the same spirit. Lift up your hands. Pray for family members. Pray for family members. Pray for family members. Pray for family members. Skela Bradish. God planned this for every man. God planned this for every man. Right from the Garden of Eden. That's the plan. That was the plan. And when he began with the disciples, he began to spread abroad around the whole world. That pattern has not changed. He has not abandoned that work. He has not abandoned that work. All men come to the knowledge of the truth. All men come to the knowledge of the truth. All men come to the knowledge of the truth. 
he will have ayatu mene shigaya regede manukroni na zanga nemo ragade falito rebede kanomo no sono kragitali kalaya reketina zumena oya tomelia rekakunde fefeti katabarata rete tanomo hozo ne brekanana ni ana ah le kapo tavalia rekebana barati ne berusuka rete petolo rokopo tototali katana baba yanama en reina mena bronda skile brandi in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, you pray for yourself. I said, this ministry of the Holy Ghost is not just for you to speak in tongues, not just for you to heal the sick. The most important aspect, because this is important for you to get to the next one, the knowledge of good and evil. How many of you know what is good and evil? How many of you can see evil and tell? And yeah, these parts, I can see where it's leading to. A lot of believers don't know. There are believers that make mistakes that cost them their lives. There are believers that make decisions without knowing. And their whole life is wrecked. They've wrecked their lives. But that's what the Holy Spirit is here for make you judge to descend between good and evil pray for yourself right now Lord this is why the Holy Spirit was given to me and I fully participate I fully partake I submit myself to the knowledge of good and evil I submit myself to the knowledge of good and evil I know what is right I know what is wrong and I do not choose that which is wrong I choose what is right I stay with that which is right in my movements in my actions in my decision making I choose the right I choose the right I choose the right Meprano, by reason of the Holy Spirit in me, I do not make wrong decisions. I make decisions that are based on truth. I make decisions that are right. Elato parata kaya, malikro mezuye taparata, eretene mani supra kuko nihila bara, mebre nagida bo saikapa, bere bere lako lizon nemi kabai lo. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, I pray over your life. From today, the Holy Spirit will begin to lead you in this direction. In this direction of knowing what is good and what is evil. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, I pray from tonight you will hear the voice of the holy spirit clearer because he said he it, it is him he spoke about that he says when you go the wrong way you will hear a voice behind you saying stop this is the way walk in it i declare in the name of the lord jesus christ the days of making wrong decisions are over in the name of the lord jesus christ from today you will know the right from today you will speak the right words from today you will make the right decisions for your life for your business for your work everything your relationships you will make the right decisions in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ every time your mouth will open you will know the difference between good and evil by the power of the Holy Spirit in you in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Thank you, precious Lord. Thank you, precious Lord. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen.